This is a homemade silkscreen. As you can see, I've used it for a couple of months, and it's pretty beaten up by now. They come in all shapes and sizes. A silkscreen is the main ingredient in a form of relief printing called screen printing. It's a wooden frame wrapped with a sheet of extremely tight nylon. It's cool because once you have your image into a screen, you're able to take it and print your design on virtually anything while having the highest quality possible. It's a lot like a spray paint stencil, but with more control and use. Silk screening was made for garments and is far superior to other printing methods. Here's an empty screen. Here's a screen with mesh. And here's the final product. The design has been imprinted into a green glue that we will get into later. There are a couple of ways to obtain a screen. You can buy one from the store, like this one. It can garner some great results. Or you can make one from scratch, like this one. It also yields some great detail. However, the only difference between these two screens is the mesh they contain. This is low mesh count, very low detail fabric, very inexpensive, and then this is a little more expensive high detail fabric, which we will be using for this project. In the meantime, I'll show you how to build a screen. If you are buying a screen, skip to this timestamp. Otherwise, gather these tools. Start this step by taking an old canvas, or horrible art that you hate, and destroy it. Make sure not to damage the wooden frame in the process. Remove the staples using a screwdriver. Cut yourself by accident. Get a band-aid. Pull the rest of the staples with pliers. It might be a good idea not to do this over your carpet like a moron. Vacuum and learn your lesson. Roll enough mesh out that it can encompass your screen with about an inch and a half of extra fabric. When it comes to it, you will use the extra fabric to pull on to keep the screen taut while stapling. On this part, try to keep it level and just staple a normal line. On the opposite end, however, pull as hard as you can and try to get a staple in there. Hammer down any loose staples and marvel at your work. Repeat this four times as the project requires four layers. For this next stage, acquire some Diazo sensitizer and photographic emulsion. My brand of choice is Speedball. It's a good idea to also read the back for the instructions and the expiration date. You should also get a scoop coater, which is basically a reservoir to hold and spread your emulsion. But you can also make do with an ink squeegee, which we will be using for the later ink phase. Finally, we will be pouring the emulsion onto the screen. Have your scoop coater ready, as well as a dark cabinet or drawer. 
After a thorough mixing of your emulsion blend, pour a generous amount into the scoop coater. You do not want to have your emulsion out in the light too long as it gets stale. Angle your screen downwards like so, wait for the emulsion to touch the screen, and make a reservoir. Hold it here, and with confidence, pull upwards. When you're finished, do not pull the scoop back, but rather angle it backwards so the emulsion slides back into it. Repeat on the other side and use the sharp metal edge to collect any excess emulsion. You want a very thin layer of the scoop. As photographic emulsion is light sensitive and hardens when exposed, store your screen in a dark room or drawer for a day before starting the next step. Thank you for joining me. By now, you should have coated your screen with emulsion and stored it in a dark room for a day. Let's make the design now. Remember, we are making the most difficult silk screening project, a CMYK halftone. CMYK refers to the colors cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Don't ask why black is K, I don't know. A halftone is a mathematical, artistic technique that simulates value while only using one color. The varying sizes of dots in the array tricks your brain into thinking there are a bunch of shades. When we combine these two aspects, we are able to create a full color image for screen printing while only using four screens instead of hundreds for every shade. Designing can be a struggle for many people. It definitely is for me, but I try not to listen. For now, take a color photo of anybody, preferably on a white background. I got this image of Denzel Curry. The next step is to bring the image into Photoshop. Start by opening a new document. Make sure the document is in CMYK format. Bring in your full color image and begin to remove the background with the quick selection tool. If you need to, right click on your image and hit rasterize and then delete the background. Make your image brighter using brightness and contrast. Finally, Posterize your image. Pick like 20 levels, doesn't really matter. Flatten your image into one layer. Go to your channels tab and hit split channels. If you don't have these five layers, you've done something horribly wrong. Your document should be replaced by four new grayscale documents. These are your cyan, magenta, yellow, and black layers. These are four examples of different screen angles. A screen angle is just a pattern that each of the halftones have to follow for them to overlay on each other perfectly and show every color. There are others too, but I'm going to use the top right example. Pause or come back when you create it. Go to image mode bitmap. Make sure you pick halftone screen under the method tab. Since this is the cyan layer, we'll be using 15 degrees. You can play around with the frequency as well, but 19 should do it. Take note of the auto-generated names of the documents. Go back to the screen angle slide to decide the angles of your halftone dots. It will correspond to the color of the document title. After you're done with the four layers, now would be a great time to add registration marks. A registration mark is a symbol you add into your design in the same place on every layer. For this project to work, each layer has to be printed exactly on each other, and you will need registration marks for this reason exactly. They could be whatever you want. I'm using this one. Have enough where you're certain you can't screw it up. Four should be good in various places. Copy and paste them into each document to make sure that they land in the same place on each one.
You should buy either inkjet or laser printer transparencies from Apollo, depending on the kind of printer you have. If you don't have a printer, buy the laser printer one. You can take it to Staples and they may even print it for free. Otherwise, print all four layers out on your transparency film at home. Now we need to burn the designs into the screens. For this, we need a makeshift exposure unit. Make two stacks of milk crates with a glass pane as a bridge in between them. Take a 500 watt light bulb and a housing for it and place it in between. Lay your transparency on top of the glass pane so it is facing the right way when looked at from the top down. Tape it down. Take one of your dry screens and make the flat end touch your transparency. Grab a book that nobody cares about and place it in the middle as weight. Turn on your light bulb. Look underneath to make sure your design is laying flat. As the light bulb gets very hot, make sure to have a fire extinguisher nearby. Mine went bad in 2003. Have your design burning for 9 minutes, and shut the light off promptly. Remove the screen and take it to a bathtub or shower. Keep it under the water for a little while. Scrub with your hands if you need to. You should be able to see your design. Tap it off. Once you have finished with all four of your screens, and the emulsion is hardened around them, you are ready for the last phase. Thank you for joining me. All right, you've made it. You've burned your four screens, and now it's time to put your image on your poster or t-shirt. Let's get to inking, but first we must start by testing. All right, I'm going to be using a printing press for my process. You can find a very cheap one on Viver.com, but keep in mind you might need to know a welder. Mine came broken. Otherwise, you can just utilize your registration marks. You should test every screen before you do the final print. Use some scrap paper rather than ruining a t-shirt like I would have. Always screw your screen downs very tight if you're using a press. I'm creating a line with the ink halfway down the design because it's a test sheet. I will then flood the screen, which is like a preprint that also doubles as a lubricant for the ink. Place your screen down on your paper and with two hands, pull towards you. Lift the screen up to see what you got and maybe reflood. It's looking pretty good. Repeat these steps for your other three screens. Sadly, on the magenta layer, my worst nightmare happened. The test sheet actually had a purpose. My emulsion got gunked up. Even though the magenta didn't come out great, I'm still going to roll with it, just to see how it goes. All the other ones look pretty fine though. Registering is really for the press, but you want to tape down any one of your transparencies, then cover any edges or pinholes with blue painter's tape so that the ink doesn't overflow. Press down your register marks onto the transparency to make sure that they all line up. Then clamp your screen down very tight, but not too tight. It's more of a feeling thing. Print your lightest color first, which is yellow, and make sure to print YMCK. Flood the screen again, place it down, and then print. Yeah, nice.
Heat it with a heat tool or wait for it to dry, but do not move it. Because by now you should have registered the other three screens and moving it would screw it all up. Next, print the magenta layer. My magenta process ink was extremely watery. I've never had that happen before. Flood like regular. And then pull. Even with the magenta, it's looking pretty good. Do the cyan layer right before the black, flood, and then pull. Here's a close-up on the dots before we print the black layer. Finally, flood the black screen, push it down, and pull for the last one. The black layer was a little unregistered and threw the whole design off, and I really did not like how it came out. I tried printing two more copies before switching my orientation to horizontal, but otherwise I print the exact same way I did before. I was very nervous for the black layer because this is where all the hard work paid off. Overall, I think the tones came out nice. There seemed to be a little bit of a lack of magenta around the face though. Another close-up of the halftone. Thank you for joining me.